Hello everyone and welcome to this video, the third in the push forward of vectors on manifolds. Now we're going to look at general relativity today and the concept of push forward and show how it's crucial in dealing with transformations between different coordinate systems or between different manifolds, such as a curved space time manifold and a tangent space at a point. What we're going to do is particularly look at the Schwarzschild and Eddington Finkelstein case. So in differential geometry, the push forward F star of V is a way of mapping vector fields from one coordinate system to another. If you have a vector V in the Schwarzschild coordinates, the push forward helps us understand what that vector looks like in the Eddington Finkelstein system. So let's have a look here. All right, so um, Schwarzschild coordinates become less accurate near the event horizon of a black hole because they contain a coordinate singularity at the Schwarzschild radius. That's the event horizon that's shown on the plot here. This causes the time component of the metric to go to zero and the radial component of the metric to diverge making the metric ill-behaved and suggesting that physical quantities become infinite, even though this is not a true physical singularity. Now, Ed uh, Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, on the other hand, are designed to remove this uh, coordinate singularity. You can see in the plot here. Um, uh, they extend the space-time description smoothly through the event horizon by introducing a new time coordinate that allows infalling objects to cross the event horizon in finite proper time. You can see the difference in the plot here. Okay, now, so let's start with the Schwarzschild space time. So we consider the Schwarzschild space time solution to Einstein's field equations. It describes the space time outside a spherically symmetric non rotating mass. And the Schwarzschild metric and standard coordinates CTR theta phi uh, gives us this line element or space time interval here. We're going to consider the transformation from Schwarzschild coordinates. CTR theta phi to Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, VR theta phi, where V is CT plus R star, and R star is this object here. Uh, if you have a look at my videos on the Eddington Finkelstein, there's two of them there on this channel, you'll, you'll see a more detailed explanation of what's going on here. Here, R star is a tortoise coordinate. Okay, so first off, in order to use the push forward, uh, we define the map, so F is a map from manifold M, Schwarzschild case, to manifold N, Eddington-Finkelstein uh, coordinate system. Okay, so between these two coordinate systems, M to N, so F takes co coordinates in M and maps them to N. So F of this uh, gives us VR theta phi and the component functions F0, CT plus R star, F1, F2, F3, okay, where V is CT plus R star, R star the tortoise coordinate. Now, perhaps I should be hiding that, get that out of the way. Right, so first let's work out the Jacobian, and we have the partial derivative of each of the components with respect to each of the coordinates. All right, and F0 over here, is CT plus R star, which is V, so partial V, partial CT, partial V, DR, and so on. When we calculate partial V with respect to CT, we get one, and over here, partial of V, all right, this one here, with respect to R, is partial R star DR, partial R, uh, and I'll calculate that over in the next slide. Um, Okay, so I'll just leave it in this form here, partial R star with respect to partial R, okay. Um, partial R, partial R gives us one. Partial theta, partial theta gives us one all along the diagonal. But here, um, F1 is R and the partial of R with respect to partial CT is zero. So all these other ones are going to give us zero. So partial phi with respect to partial CT will give us zero, all right. So we get ones in the diagonal and this term here. Next bit. All right, now um, partial R star, partial R is this object here. If you perform that um, uh, partial differentiation, you'll end up with this object here. I'm not gonna take up space doing it here. I think I've done it elsewhere in the channel. Now the Jacobian then becomes this. All right, and what we want to do now is apply the push forward to a vector, let's say V is, partial partial CT, so in the time direction, a, unit, a vector in the 
in the uh, time direction here. So let's push forward this V equals partial partial CT. So this is expressing the basis vectors in a, in a partial operator form, as, as is in the cases in differential geometry. So in Schwarzschild coordinates, we get F star of V is F star of partial partial CT is DF. And in component form, you can write that as in this format here in column vector form, one, zero, 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 of course. And we're going to multiply the Jacobian of F by this vector here, this column vector, and it just gives us this column vector back. Right. Now, in Eddington and Finkelstein coordinates, this corresponds to F star V as this is partial, partial V. Right. Um, now, uh, this shows that the push forward of the vector partial, partial CT under the transformation F is the vector partial, partial V in the new coordinates. Because remember in the new coordinates, we had V R theta phi, okay? So this one, which is wholly a time coordinate in the Schwarzschild case, now becomes this V. And this V, as we know, has time in it and the radial coordinates. So it's a mixture of the two. Right? So on manifold N, that coordinate system this vector in the on the Schwarzschild manifold M becomes this on the manifold N. All right, so under the transformation of F uh, is the vector um, in the new coordinates. Let's apply the push forward to another vector from the Schwarzschild manifold M, our first manifold. V is partial, partial R. Applying that, okay, so it's a column vector 0, 1, 0, 0 in the Schwarzschild coordinates. Um, F star of partial, partial R is the um, Jacobian of F, this object here by that. And when we do that, we get um, this in the first place and one in the second place, then zero, zero is elsewhere. Uh, so on manifold N, this vector here on manifold M becomes this vector here on manifold N. Next one. All right, so in Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, this corresponds to F star of V is F star partial partial R is this object here, partial partial V plus this one here. Okay, just for completeness, let's uh, just look at the two angular variables. So uh, from manifold M, Schwarzschild coordinates to manifold N, the Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, partial partial theta, partial partial phi. Okay, applying the push forward to those, both of them. Uh, in terms of theta, we have this column vector here, 0, 0, 1, 0, and for the phi, 0, 0, 0, 1. Performing these multiplication of the matrix, the Jacobian matrix with each of these vectors, gives us this object here and this one here. All right, so there's no change, as you can see, um, it for the angular variables. In going from Schwarzschild to Eddington Finkelstein, it's the time radial components are affected. All right, so for the angular components, that the push forwards of these vectors leaves them unchanged, okay? In Eddington Finkelstein coordinates, we replace the time coordinate CT with a new coordinate V, which is known as the advanced time or ingoing null coordinate. This coordinate is related to Schwarzschild coordinates by V is CT plus R star, R star is all this here. And the purpose of this transformation is to create a coordinate system that remains well behaved at the event horizon, R is 2GM of C squared R, where Schwarzschild coordinates break down and give us the coordinate singularity, which is not a physical singularity, even though at first it appears to be suggesting it's a physical singularity, but it's not. It's simply our choice of coordinates. All right, now given a vector in the Schwarzschild coordinates, the push forward helps us understand what that vector looks like in the Eddington Finkelstein system. Now, we have seen how the vector partial partial r, which points in the radial direction in Schwarzschild coordinates, is mapped to the vector this one in the Eddington Finkelstein coordinate system. Because remember, we had the two components, the V1 the and the R1. Remember that column vector. Well, let's have a look at each one of them in turn. So the timeline component, um, partial partial v, the, this, the term this means that the radial vector in Schwarzschild coordinates picks up a contribution in the V direction, the advanced time direction. This is because the relationship between V and R involves a non-trivial radial dependence um, through R star, which is a function of R. Remember R star was this. 
So this factor becomes large near the Schwarzschild radius, <coughs> indicating that R changes, uh, indicate that changes in R correspond to increasingly large changes in V as you approach the event horizon. In other words, as you get closer to the black hole, even a small change in R leads to a large shift in the advanced time coordinate V. And then the other one to deal with, the radial component, partial partial R, the second term, partial partial R, because remember the two terms, simply tells us that part of the radial vector remains in the radial direction, even in Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. This is because the R coordinate itself is the same in both coordinate systems. So the radial direction doesn't completely vanish. All right. All right, so that's the mathematical part. So the physical interpretation near the event horizon, R equals 2gm on c squared r, the factor becomes very large. This reflects the fact that as you approach the event, the, the horizon, the event horizon, the radial motion in R becomes increasingly intertwined with the time-like direction in V. In other words, near the event horizon, changes in the radial coordinate R are closely linked to the passage of time V as seen by an observer moving inward with the flow of space-time. Away from the event horizon, when R is large compared to the event horizon, the factor B approaches one, so the vector partial partial R remains mostly radial with only a small time-like contribution in V. All right, so why is this so important? The transformation and the resulting push forward are crucial for understanding how different observers particularly those near a black hole, perceive space-time. Schwarzschild coordinates break down at the event horizon, but Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates remain regular there, as I showed you in the plot at the beginning. The fact that partial partial R requires a time-like component in Eddington-Finkelstein coordinates reflects the fact that near a black hole, space and time mix in a non-trivial way. Specifically, inside the event horizon, radial motion becomes inseparable from the passage of time, remember that? Which is part of the essence of the black hole structure. All right, so that was an example of the, push, the use of the push forward of vectors from differential geometry in a coordinate change from the Schwarzschild coordinates to the Eddington Finkelstein coordinates. Um, I hope everybody um, found that useful. Um, I hope it was clear uh, and that you enjoyed the video uh, if you do please um, or if you did please uh, like the video and subscribe and um, thank you very much for watching I appreciate that and I'll see you in the next video all right take care everyone bye